Hey folks, I'm sitting here in a cafe now, and it's a scene that you'll probably see all over the world. Um, people on their mobile phones. And um, it's unavoidable now. Um, I can understand if you're sitting on your own, looking at phones, just killing time, but the real sad part is when you see friends or families sitting at a table and everybody's looking at their own mobile phone. And you're thinking, what the hell happened to the art of conversation? What did we do before mobile phones? See, fortunately, I grew up in an era where I remember what it was like when people sat around tables without mobile phones and we talked, especially families. But it's so difficult to fight the intrusion of a mobile phone into our daily lives. And you, you have to wonder, what does it do to us as a society when... Uh, people grow up without that art of conversation. Do we just simply accept that that's natural? And how will that affect people? And I wonder because, you know, human connection is one of the most important basic needs that we have as animals. You know, look what happens to criminals. We, we remove them from society. And from the worst criminals, we remove them from their inmates and we put them into solitary confinement which is the worst punishment for the worst offenders and you might think that solitary confinement sounds like a bit of a holiday or a vacation inside a prison but studies have shown how solitary confinement can impact us negatively and the human brain actually deteriorates when it has a lack of human contact and it's no coincidence that Amnesty International said that solitary confinement was a punishment so brutal that they campaigned and lobbied for it to be banned universally. So coming back to conversation, I believe that conversation is a fundamental tool for connection and communication between us as social animals. And if we don't have the skills to do this, what is going to happen? Well, I think it's like Starbucks. The reason Starbucks is so popular is not because people have a growing need for coffee, but people have a growing need for space to connect for community that we're losing in our day-to-day -day lives. And I feel the equivalence of that in conversation is giving us back the conversations that we're no longer part of. And that is where I feel podcasting comes in because podcasting is not interviewing. If you want interviewing, you can go and get information online. The how-tos are out there. You know, you can get the short five-minute sound bites. But really what people want out of podcasting is the Starbucks equivalent of that emotional connection with something that's lost. And it's the conversations. People want to sit in and listen in and be part of conversations that they don't have in their daily lives anymore. So that is what I feel is the emotional power and appeal of podcasting. And just look around, you see it, is that what the hell is going on there?